Okay, so let's see who we got here. Good, good, good. So um, where is, uh, so Lori. Hands up if you can hear me, guys. No? Oh, good. You can hear me, you can see me, I can't see you. We told you that today we got to like show pictures because it's presentation time. I want to see people. All right, excellent. Laurie, batter up. Yeah, I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you sort of like hosting. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to make you host. All right. And you're going to take a shot at me. Um, well, shot at everybody. Yeah, I can't hear anybody right now. Do you want to make Lori co-host? Yes, I do. All right. And so you're now co-host, Lori. And um, yeah. And um, so whenever you're ready. Okay. Let me share my screen then. So I made Noah, Shuli, Bano, we can't see you because I need to see you guys so I can judge how Laurie's doing. Hang on one sec. It's not letting me share my screen quite yet. Let me see. I have to exit and then join the meeting again for it to share my screen. Oh, okay, now, so you go ahead and do that. Let's, um, it's called beginner's pain, yeah? So um, give me a couple of minutes. Let me try something here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while she's waiting, yeah, I'm, I'm grading those um, exam papers. You should have them by Wednesday. So for a lot of you guys who are, who are doing this early, um, you're going to have plenty of time to review, so that's good. Um, um, Dr. Frazier, would you mind making me co-host one more time? Okay, Doug, so hold on. Where are you? Oh, there you are. I'm going to make you host, see if that will work better, yeah? All right. You're the host now. Remember to relinquish control to me later, yeah? <laughs> okay, so everyone can see this. Okay. Mm -hmm. then... Okay, so I'm Lori Schultz, as you know, and I'm going to talk about this new synthesis of tunable hydroxylated benzocarians. Oops. Okay, so first off, what is a benzofurian and why do we even care about these structures? Benzofurians are these benzo, uh, benzo rings fused furian, five-membered rings, and typically they will substitute them with different substituents, especially hydroxy groups. And when they substitute them, they, researchers will normally count this as carbon two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, to denote the different substituent groups on that benzofurian. The reason that we want to add substituent groups to the benzofurian, especially hydroxy groups, is that when you add these groups, we can make different drugs. For example, here is fumistrol, which has a hydroxy group on the carbon six position. And this drug has been shown to have activity against cancer, neurological disorders, and autoimmune diseases. Another example I have shown here is lifigol, which has a hydroxy group on the carbon five and carbon six positions. And this drug has been shown to control various signaling pathways in our body and has been shown to have activity against autoimmune disorders, cardiovascular diseases, as well as cancer. So how do we make these benzofurans, especially ones that are hydroxylated? There are two previously known strategies to make these. The first one is called transition metal catalyzed CH functionalization. So this goes for making any sort of benzo ring fused to a five-membered heteroatom group. 
spring, um, such as this indole used for demonstration. So for this first strategy, what they do is they add dire directing groups to the carbon three position as well as the hetero atom. And these directing groups can help add a substituent group onto the benzo ring. So it works really well for adding substituents to the carbon four and carbon seven positions, but it's a little bit more difficult to add to the carbon five and six positions because it's farther away. Some examples of using indole, this strategy with the indole ring, is Yang et al. was able to, to sub, add substituent groups to the carbon six position, carbon three position, carbon two and carbon seven positions by using this oxophosphate directing group. And how this works is this directing group would chelate to their copper triflate catalyst. And this catalyst would activate this uh, bond in the benzene ring and then, and then selectively add this phenyl group to the benzene ring. Um, so this worked great for indoles, but the problem is when we apply it to a benzofurian, we're not actually able to add a directing group to the oxygen because it already has two bonds. So we're only really able to access the carbon four and five positions. And these two positions are more difficult to add substituents to. The second uh, way that we can make benzofurans is through annulation, which is another word for cyclization. Here, Kudo et al. showed an example where they used a Diels-Alder reaction that was promoted by BASE. This is Triton B, it's a, a basic species. And once they made this charge, that was able to go through Diels-Alder reaction to form both the furan ring and the benzo ring to make the benzo furan. Another example is by Zhang et al., who used photo-induced oxidative annulation to form the benzo ring part of the benzofurian. So first there was some tautomerization and then um, it was light activated to do the cyclization and then the light actually uh, deprotonated this ring to form the benzene group. The final example I wanted to show was by Moth et al. I thought this was interesting because they formed an enolate and this enolate chelated with their copper triflate catalyst, forming this uh, six-membered transition state, kind of like what we've seen in class before. And this enolate then proceeded to react with this quinone species, cyclizize, and then form the uh, benzofurian group. So these strategies both work fairly well to make benzofurians, but problems with them is that there has to be a sacrificial hydroxy group to form this hydrogen, or this, sorry, this oxygen in the furan group. So we typically realize the loss of a hydroxyl group. And if we want to add more uh, hydroxyl substituents, we have to use protection or deep protection groups, which can increase the cost, increase the time it makes to synthesize them, and of course, decrease yield. So this paper that was published in Angavante proposed a new mechanism to make benzofurans, and they called it a deconstructive reorganization, de novo synthesis of hydroxylated benzofuran. So this word de novo basically means that they're gonna start with very simple compounds and then make much more complicated uh, molecules out of them. And the simple compounds they wanted to start with were kojic acid and maltol acid and their derivatives. The reason they chose these species was because they're extremely inexpensive, because they're used in the drug industry and the food industry, so they're easy to obtain and easy to make derivatives out of them by substituting groups onto these group, onto them. So firstly, their strategy was they were going to start with the kojic acid derivative, Add a catalyst, this catalyst would activate the alkyne bond here and promote the cyclization to form the furan ring. Then they would hydrolyze this in the same pot and this would uh, reorganize this pyrone ring into the benzene ring. So in order to test this, they tried various catalysts, they tried various solvents, and they tried adding different additives. These additives would make the catalyst cationic, which for some reactions helps it, per, uh, helps it promote the reaction to go faster, cleaner, 
Uh, in this case, it didn't do that. They also tried adding water to see if that would help the hydrolysis, which didn't improve the yield. And they also added a molecular sieve to see if, if taking water out would uh, hinder the reaction, which of course it did because we need water for the hydrolysis. So in all of these tests, they found that the best parameters for this reaction were using 10% molar indium triflate catalyst inside THF and then either heating it to 60 degrees or 100 degrees Celsius, depending on the substituent groups. So using these parameters for the kojic acid derivative, they were able to obtain carbon 5 and 6 dihydroxylated benzofurans, as well as carbon 5 and 6 disubstituted, also carbon 6 disubstituted benzofurans, and finally carbon 4, 5, and 6 trisubstituted benzofurans. So it proved to be a highly successful reaction system. The next step was to test this on the maltol acid derivative. So here's the maltol acid derivative. They tried the same exact conditions and found that this reaction did not work. So their idea was, why don't we try methanolysis instead of hydrolysis? So what they did was add methanol and HCl. This HCl promotes the methanolysis. And using these conditions, they got their product in high yield. And they were able to obtain carbon-4 substituted benzofurans, as well as carbon-4 and 5 disubstituted benzofurans. So now that they know the reaction conditions for each derivative, um, for each pathway, they wanted to actually understand what the pathway was, what's happening in this reaction. So to investigate the mechanism, first they looked at the kojic acid pathway. And instead of adding their indium triflate catalyst, they tried this platinum dichloride catalyst. And this, this promoted it to form this intermediate, which when this intermediate was put in the system with indium triflate and THF, which is the exact same conditions as their parameters, it fully converted to their product. So that they found that this species here is likely the intermediate of the kojic acid pathway. They wanted to test also the maltol acid pathway. So first they tested just adding five equivalents of methanol and no HCl. So this doesn't really promote the methanolysis. And they obtained two species, both intermediate two and intermediate three. Intermediate two, they obtained in high yield. Intermediate three, only in trace amounts. And then they took these intermediates and put them into different parameters. So for intermediate two, they first tested just the catalyst and THF. So note that there's no methanol and no HCl, and they only got trace amounts of their product. When they put this intermediate into a system with THF and HCl, they got a high yield of their product. And then to test this with intermediate three, they did the same thing. And you'll see that when they put it in with their uh, indium catalyst, they only got trace amounts, but with HCl to promote that methanolysis, they were able to get high yields of their product. So in conclusion, they found that both uh, intermediate two and intermediate three are likely species in the pathway of the maltol acid derivative. So putting all of their intermediates together, they formed this mechanism loop, which looks a bit overwhelming, so I'll break it down. The first part of the loop, you're either going to start with a kojic acid derivative or a maltol acid derivative. Then you will add the indium triflate catalyst, which will act activate this alkyne bond. This will promote the cyclization to form the furan ring, as shown in species B. This cyclization is called 5 indo dig cyclization, and the name comes from different parameters of what's happening. So 5 means that there's a five-membered ring being formed. Endo means that the bond that's being broken will end up inside the ring instead of outside. If it was outside, it would be exo. And then dig has to do with the geometry of the bond that's being broken. So in this case, it's digonal, which is sp hybridized. After this species is formed, then we go on to the second part of the loop where either it can go through the kojic acid pathway or the maltol acid pathway. For the kojic acid pathway, we perform hydrolysis and get this intermediate as shown before. Then it promotes the cyclization and then 
dehydration and aromatization in order to form either a C4, 5, and or 6 substituted benzofuran. For the maltol-based pathway, instead of hydrolysis, we have methanolysis going through these intermediates and then forming the aromatization, we get either a C4 and or 5 substituted benzofurian. So now that they knew that their process went well, they wanted to just go the extra mile and apply the different products that they have, apply basic organic synthesis measures in order to obtain different drugs. So different um, organic uh, synthesis that they did was methyl methylation, hydrogenation, uh, uh, oxidation, etc., and they were able to obtain different drugs such as morsin, which is an anti-inflammatory, as well as cumistrol, uh, which I discussed earlier in class, alifurian, which is an insect, refel insect repellent and antioxidant, and um, many more drugs. So they basically proved that their benzofurin synthesis was not only useful, but it could be extended to make many more drugs. And that concludes my discussion. Thank you. Uh, I can't hear you, Dr. Frazier. I'm sorry. Are you muted? <laughs> sorry about that, yeah. Because I gave you total hosting abilities. So of course I, yeah, I was talking to myself. So what I'm saying is like, uh, that was quite good. What I want from you is, what I want from people right now is to ask some questions. I mean, I would really want you to, like what you saw from Lori, ask her some questions so we can get some feedback and I'll maybe ask some questions as well, yeah? So why don't we go ahead and do that? John, you're a brave soul. Why don't you go ahead and ask some questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, this might be a sub objective question, but you probably know the most out of all of us, which pathway do you think is the most useful, the kojic acid or the maltol? That is a good question. I would say probably kojic acid because you're able to obtain the C6 substitution, which is difficult to get with the first strategy using the directing groups. Okay. So that's my subjective answer. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, bouncing off that question, um, I saw that there was no way to get the C7 position. Did the authors have any speculation of how that might be possible, or did they think that was important at all? That's a good question. They didn't actually mention that, uh, that species at all. So I think that that's probably because you're able to obtain C7 positions easier with the uh, other uh, synthesis methods, but they probably should have extended that. Um, I have a question. Um, you mentioned that they were doing like the di substituted and tri substituted species. Um, was there any part that they discussed like when they were trying to do just like like a mono substitute to end up with a di substituted in terms of like selectivity? They didn't talk about that. They talked about uh, changing the different R groups, like if it's the electronegative or electro withdrawing, and they found that depending on those R groups, there's actually a lot of difference in their yields. So it, lo it looks like it worked well for any of the substi substituent groups. Okay, thank you. So did, uh, are these guys, do they have any sort of um, uh, so collaboration with any decent pharmaceutical companies or anything? Did you notice anything in the papers? That they came about. Really. No, they didn't. They didn't talk about that. Yeah. How did they come across this paper? I looked at Angavante, their recent publications. And you just was browsing? Yeah, and it looked interesting. <laughs> really cool way. Yeah, Gretzky and she's got loads of titles. Just Let me just browse and get some pharmaceutical stuff. Yeah, I, I, I just want to go back yeah, to, um, to slide. Let me see if this slide is. I'm sorry about this. Uh, slide. Where's the oh, slide, Lori? Hold on, I'm looking. These guys.
All right, so look, um, can you pull up slide 28? So can we see it? Just a quick second, yeah? All right, so it's, is that 28? I think the animations like these. 28. Yeah, that's 28, right? 28 is, what, what, which one is that? That's 28, yes. Press that, press that. Oh. Yeah. Press that one, yes. Is that, no, that's not, that's 19. I changed there. that. Is that, or you change slide numbers. Okay, so we're looking at slide 20. Oh, excellent, good. So I'm looking at slide 20, and there is a, there is a, in the INT1, so that's intermediate one, it looks like you have this enolate attack on that carbonyl, yeah? Is that what I'm, what I'm looking at? So, yeah. yeah. So we have the enolate attack on carbonyl one. Ring, yeah. And you end up with this, Kojic acid path based pathway. Could you explain to me exactly what happened with the dehydration? What happened there? I can't see it. They, uh, they said that it goes through a dehydration and then an air aromatization to form the benzene ring. So I believe that the driving force is the, uh, the formation of an aromatic ring. So if oh, okay. it's dehydrated, I would think um, either just by heating or- Yeah, dehydrated. okay, okay. So you're talking about some inolate stuff, yeah. All right, good. So it's all inolate chemistry. And then when I look at the other section, when I look at through intermediate three, the metal pathway, okay, so now you've got that hanging me file. And so you have that attack. All right, and the same sort of thing happens with the loss of, all right, good. All right, so any more questions? Any more questions? No? Okay, Laurie, um, that was pretty good, yeah? So, um, yeah, I've got some point systems down here from the stuff and uh, uh, we'll give you a tally later on, yes? All right, good. What time is your engineering class? It's in six minutes. Really? To help with those engineers, you know, you should hang out with us. <laughs> okay. Who's next? Laurie, thank you. I'm next. Yep. Yeah, Banu, is that you? Yeah. Uh, Banu. Um, yeah, my slide, my one is another one similar to the analyte chemistry. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Laurie, give me my hosting ability. Or give it to Banu. Uh, that. That's the cool thing about being home. That's one cool thing about being home. You can have fresh coffee. Yo, I just like, I need coffee. I went out there, I ground my beans. Yeah, kettle on, you know, I pressed it. And I'm like, right here, just, I, I don't have to go drink stupid coffee. I got Good coffee, yeah. So I'm very happy right now. You understand what I mean, Selena? Yes? Good. All right, so have we got hosting abilities um, now, Barnum? Right now. He's got it now? That's Banu, yeah. Okay, Banu. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes, good, good, good. All right, let's take a shot of this. Okay, so today I'm going to present something similar to the inolate chemistry. And yes. Is the usage of disodium salt. Okay. Is sodium diisopropyl amide instead of the LDA for the preparation of Myers inolates that we have studied using the pseudofedrine derived inolate that we see in the class. So okay. let's start. Okay, so this is my outline. First, I'm going to discuss about the why pseudofedrine is used and then I'm going to recap the Mars asymmetric alkylations, what was the problem with that, and what they have improved in this paper. And then I'm going to go for the inolates form using sodium diisopropylamide, di mm -hmm. and their reactivity, selectivity, and the one major thing is the aging effect. How does it affect the inolate structure as well as its reactivity in the reaction? And I'm gonna end with the group. Okay. So let's start with the pseudofedrine. 
So pseudoephedrine is a very common drug. It is, I just learned that it is banned from 2005, but still it's a very good drug that is used for the nasal infections. And now- Manu, Manu. Yeah. Learned that they banned it? Yeah, it's uh, not commercially available to the consumers. No, in 2005. Surprised. Yeah, it's of course it's been a long time because they use it to make illegal stuff. Anyway, continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this pseudoephedrine is readily available in bulk, and one of the major reasons is it's in is inexpensive. And also for its uh, usage as chiral auxiliary is because it is highly effective. As it's such, it reacts with acid chlorides or anhydrides, which leads to the efficient and selective anisolation to form the corresponding tertiary amide derivatives. And that from that, we can use LDA, THF, and something like that to form these dead analytes that is thermodynamically stable. And this is the normal pseudo, how does the chiral axillary attacks to the acid chlorides? And now I'm gonna talk about the Muir's asymmetry alkylations that is same to the one that Dr. Fraser discussed in the class. And in this case, it's uh, the usage of LDA and lithium chloride that is six equivalent to form the Z analyte. And that leads to the formation of the alpha alkylated products. Um, attack happens from the alpha sites because beta side is obviously hindered from the from these solvents and ortho, what could I say about it? Like, yeah, um, oxo lithiated solvents so, so that it's uh, attack only happens from the alpha positions. And so the major problem was with Myers asymmetric calculations was that it adds a significant cost on for pharmaceutical plant scales. Uh, and that is lithium chloride. That lithium chloride is a very good system thing because in this case, lithium chloride actually forms an adduct that is dilithiated inolate lithium chloride adducts. And this actually prevents the aging effect that happens to the structure as well as its uh, reactivity. This is in short, increases the reactivity of the reaction and it does not, it does not affect the aging of the inolate. So lithium chloride was a very good step by Mayors, but in short, it actually bypassed the aging effect and directly goes towards the product. But we later found out that the aging effect is very important and it should be discussed. And also lithium chloride has to be at 20 degrees Celsius. It should be a little bit warm, minus 20, sorry, minus 20. And it should be a little bit warm before addition so that that lithium, chloride and dilithiated and lithium chloride adduct can be formed easily, which is a very big process and it's significantly add cost to the pharmaceutical plant scales. So now um, this is the reaction that goes, that they are going for, that is they use the di sodium diisopropyl amide to form the disodiated enolate and that is the main Z enolate, but in short, they are not using the lithium chloride and actually considering the aging effects that actually affect this reaction. So these disodium salts have the advantage that do not require additives. That's the case. And also they can be produced in high concentration preferred for industrial scales. And the mechanism is very similar to the and actually very similar to the one we have discussed in the class that is the simple Myers one. And they are using disodium, sorry, sodium diisopropylamide one and to form this kind of structure that is this, sorry, this. And in this, this alpha position attacks to the R1 and the X goes off and it in short form the alpha alkylated product. And the reactivity and selectivity is a very big issue here because, sorry. Okay, so reactivity and selectivity is a very big problem here. It is something similar to the one that we have discussed in the class, but uh, like alkylation, so highly reactive alkyl halides occur within five to 10 minutes and less reactive saturated alkyl halides require elevated temperature that is minus 40 degrees Celsius or higher amount of time. But, the one with the last one that is 
this case with the i don't know how to pronounce it i'm real sorry but yeah in this case it results in the formation of less than 50% of the adenolate and that also it takes 3.5 hours with the slow warming of the solution too so that's the main problem so we are discussing about the aging effect and how does it matters in this reactivity and selectivity how does it affect these things so the aging effect of on enolate structure and its reactivity is that it is considered through the nmr 13 carbon nmr and here you can see that this is the enolate that is that enolate aged at minus 80 degrees celsius overnight the structure doesn't change there is separate there is separate separated carbons they are not there is no irre, irreversible changes to it but when we start to warm it up a little that minus 80 degrees celsius for 20 in within 20 minutes it started to change and if we aged it at 0 degrees celsius for 20 minutes it completely changes which is an irreversible change and that is affects that affects the reactivity in short it actually forms the aggregates that is hetero homo and mixed ag aggregates and this in turn affects the reaction as it can't move forward as it can't go on forward and that is that the alkylation of such age samples suffer from significantly reduced percent conversion that is 50 to 80 percent and that is what we saw in this case in the last in the last entry we saw that minus 78 degrees celsius but we have started to warm it up at 3.5 hours but the yield is very less that is less than 50 percent for the z enolate so in the end, they concluded with this that the alkylations of the disodium Myers enolate provide results that are largely compared to those obtained by Myers without the lithium chloride additions, as well as this aging step is critical for success. Because as you see that the aging step is very important and Myers was actually skipping this step by using lithium chloride, because in the end that lithium chloride forms an adduct with the enolate and actually fasten the reaction. So that's it. Um, yep, thank you. Okay, so um, let's get this out of the way. Thanks, Bano. Um, you guys have questions out there? There's, um, Please. Um, I have a question again. Um, when you were talking about the one that gave you the like really, really low yields, um, is there any reason why you didn't try it for a longer period of time or at a higher temperature to see if that might increase the yield? Or did actually, they talk about that? Actually, if they increase the temperature, increase the time that is more than 3.5 hours, its yield was decreasing to 20%. So they just stop at that point. Yeah. I have, I have a question. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, what are the what are the aging products that are being um, and do they have any maybe 2D or proton NMR to associate with this carbon? Because this is just telling us some carbon environments are changing. It's not telling us anything okay. structurally, really. Actually, the thing is they actually compare that Actually, um, how should I say? I can explain you to the structure that is forming. Is they are forming hetero and homo aggregates, and those hetero and homo aggregates are similar to this structure. But let's see this one sample on the this one sample on the top. If we change this methyl with something else, like different R groups, and they combine with different chains like X and Y, this some similar carbon is here. And these forms an aggregate that is an heteromer. Sometimes it's octal dilithiated that is formed in Myers. And these kind of structures form. They are mixed and they could be homo that is similar ones and the hetero ones that are different. Same structure but different R groups. And they form a aggregate and this aggregate is very stable and it really affects the reaction. That's why when the aged samples are, I don't know, let's say. Yeah, hold on a second. Bano. Let me just box in the first. You're saying, right? Which one is more stable, aggregates or non-aggregates? Aggregates. The aggregates are more stable. Yeah. 
So why wouldn't lithium with a higher charge density than sodium, why wouldn't that create stronger aggregates and therefore Oh, actually, the lithium one is actually, since there's lithium chloride present in solution, as well as there is a dilithiated enolates, so that lithium helps in the subunit exchange. It is, act as, act as a linkage between them, and in short, it decreases the aggregations, as well as by forming a dilithiated enolate lithium chloride adapt, something like that. There are two possible reasons for that. It is not specific, specified by Myers and as well as these. And I read about something, some, read about these things and I got to know that actually lithium chloride catalyzed deaggregation as well as forms a dilithiated enolated lithium chloride adapt. And they help in the subunit exchange of the particles that in short, Deaggregates the. In, in this paper, because I did not see this paper, but in this paper, was there NMRs? You have this NMR that shows the aging um, for the sodium species. Mm -hmm. Did they compare it directly with the aging of the lithium species? Did they, um, did, did they have NMRs next door, or did they have it in another paper that we should have seen? No, actually, they didn't compare with the lithiated species, but but they told us that it's a kind of similar thing. If we, lithium chloride is free, then this happens. Aging is there, but if lithium chloride is there, then the aggregation is formed, but is also deaggregates, and the reaction becomes faster because of the subunit exchange, which deaggregates the aggregated samples. That is homo and hetero aggregates. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking at the NMR. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that carbon one, that's the deepest. Mm -hmm. And so literally, also, so this aging seems like promotes um, so reversal of the inner layer, you're getting back that carbonate looks like. No, maybe not, because that's kind of still good. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. So, yeah. Is there anything else you guys want to ask? Um, no, Any, anything else? I have a question, but I'm not yeah. sure if you answered it. Um, if the aggregates are such a problem, is there any extra reagent that could reduce the aggregates? Or are you saying the lithium chloride was reducing aggregates? Uh, aggregates are a very big problem. That's why it's temperature sensitive. That's why they are you know, doing the experiment at minus 80 degrees Celsius or minus 78 degrees Celsius. And also they are decreasing the time. Like they don't want that to age. They are doing the experiment within 10 minutes or 20 minutes, like in this case. See, in five or 10 minutes, that reaction is a lot faster. Okay, is, is there possible maybe another reagent could reduce the strain on this experiment of like needing to do it at a low temp? Actually, they are doing it for the pharmaceutical ones. So they want to remove the cost and that extra reagent that is lithium chloride that is increasing the cost as okay. according to Myers, they have to heat it up to form that adduct. But if it's not heated, that adduct cannot be formed. Okay. Yeah, so it just increases the cost. I see. So this is actually the more cost efficient route. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Read, read that model and kind of see exactly where we're going with this. Yeah. But that's good stuff. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. you. This model. Mm -hmm. 
Good. All right. So um, yeah, better up where we. Is it who's who's up next? Is it who, who's up next? Um, from our. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Amit, is it? yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, give I mean, them control, and then we can move on from there. Okay. So, but. Banu, give Amit the hosting abilities, yeah? Uh, Fraser, you have are? hosting right now. You are? Uh, Fraser, you're the host right now. Dr. Okay. Fraser, yourself is host now. Oh, okay. Oh. Why does Fraser keep getting muted mid-sentence? I think it's poor internet connection, maybe. Because he freezes sometimes too. Dr. Fraser, you're muted. Okay, so um, oh, okay. I mean, you now have the, the host thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a really, really sucky computer here. My laptop is better, but it's not efficient for the work we're doing, yeah? So, <laughs> yeah. Uh... Let me see how I can share my screen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, can you hear me and see my screen? Uh, this presentation is about gastro and anti-selective synthesis of homoallelic amines bearing quaternary carbon centers. Uh, the articles uh, that uh, I used it as the main reference uh, has been uh, written by uh, these researchers from a University of North Carolina. Uh, that article has been published in uh, Journal of American Chemical Society in January 2020. Uh, uh, the main discussion or focus of this presentation uh, is about the synthesis of two motifs, including uh, chiral amines and all carbon quaternary uh, stereocenters uh, by catalytic uh, and anti-selective methods. Uh, as, a, as a main method, uh, we will uh, mention to an anti-selective, uh, will mention to the enantioselective allyl addition to uh, imines with uh, appropriately substituted uh, carbon-based uh, nucleophiles. Um, there are some uh, catalytic methods for the uh, enantio and diastereoselective additions to gamma-substituted allyl regions, uh, such as uh, carotyl, uh, to imines. Uh, these methods form secondary homoallelic amines uh, bearing uh, vicinal tertiary stereocenters, uh, but uh, we want to see, uh, we want to uh, discuss uh, bearing um, quaternary stereocenters in, uh, uh, in uh, next slides. Uh, one example of this um, method or topic is addition of uh, allyl boron borons to uh, TMS uh, aldimines uh, via the borinic esters. Um, this, uh, this reaction gives us a, a high yield of the product with um, high diastero, diastromeric and enantiomeric uh, ratio. Uh, for uh, bearing quaternary uh, carbon stereocenters, there are some uh, catalytic uh, protocols, uh, including uh, chiral uh, amine alcohols and chiral binaphthyl diodes. Uh, chiral amine alcohols um, catalyze an uh, efficient uh, enanti and diastereoselective additions of chiral uh, allyl boron to aldimines uh, with, uh, with a good yield but not very high uh, diastereomeric, uh, diastereomeric ratio. Um, another, another catalytic method uh, is uh, chiral uh, naphthyl diodes that, uh, that they catalyze the enantio and diastereoselective additions of uh, gamma gamma dye substituted allyl boronic acids to uh, cyclic imines. Uh, 
with high diastereomeric and enantiomeric uh, ratios. Uh, but uh, there are some um, maybe um, small or mild uh, limitations for uh, uh, catalytic uh, for catalytic approaches, including requirements of performant um, enantio enriched gamma gamma di substituted allyl boron regions and unstable acryl uh, allyl boronic acids. Uh, to date, uh, metal-free catalytic approaches um, can be considered as the most uh, effective method for the enantioselective synthesis of quaternary carbon uh, estrogenic centers uh, in allylic nucleophile additions to imines. But uh, uh, there, there, is, uh, there is one advantage for, for uh, these uh, approaches, metal-free catalytic approaches, and it's... Uh, and it's um, uh, they can maintain the E or Z alkene isomer of the allyl regions, but uh, due to their uh, configurational instability, uh, due to their configurational instability, uh, maybe we uh, we we how we uh, we should uh, improve uh, these methods or uh, seek uh, other uh, better methods. Um, um, to date, uh, other um, um, some uh, metal catalyzed um, approaches uh, has been uh, have been developed um, uh, during uh, by by which uh, use of allylic uh, geminal diboronate esters uh, used for construction of contiguous. Uh, estrogenic centers via allylic nucleophile additions to carbonyl or uh, imine groups. For example, uh, and preparation for this, uh, uh, all these regions, we can use PD or RDU catalyzed uh, olefin isomerization uh, and uh, follow that by enantio and diastereoselective uh, addition to uh, aldehyde uh, promoted by a chiral phosphoric acid. We can have uh, an, um, an antiomeric uh, product with, uh, with this uh, ratio. Another strategy is the uh, astero-selective addition of isolated uh, allyl uh, diboron ester to a variety of uh, cyclic uh, sulfonyl imines uh, but uh, this approach or this strategy is limited to e uh, regions. Now, in this scheme, we can uh, see that uh, uh, allyl diboron ester is uh, added to aldehyde in left side and added to uh, uh, cyclic sulfonyl imines in uh, right side uh, and um, form the desired uh, products. According to the previous studies, uh, some of which uh, has been mentioned to the uh, previous slides, uh, through the previous slides, and according to the basic concepts of in organic chemistry, we can postulate that a stereo defined uh, gamma gamma di substituted uh, allyl diborons would result in increased region stability and their participation in uh, an anti selective. Uh, CU catalyzed additions to uh, imines result in the enantioselective synthesis of uh, secondary homoallelic amines during a quaternary carbon stereogenic center. Uh, by replacing uh, different uh, substituents uh, instead of R1 and R2 or different aryl groups or uh, different substituents are um, on this uh, aryl group, we can have different uh, yield um, more, um, between 51 to 82 percent and uh, high diastereomeric and enantiomeric uh, ratios. To synthesis this region, region number two, uh, we can use a direct uh, PD catalyzed cross coupling of uh, lithiated organo uh, diboron. Uh, by this uh, by this reaction uh, and uh, 
using different uh, substituents in positions of R1 and R2. We have uh, different yields. Uh, between them, the, uh, the yield of uh, reaction with the substituents of N-butyl in, uh, in position of R1 and methyl in position of R2 is the highest yield. Uh, if we use the methyl in uh, positions of both of R1 and R2, the uh, yield will be 52%. Okay, in this uh, in this scheme, uh, in this scheme, uh, if we uh, place a methyl in this position uh, instead of R1, we have two methyls in allylic positions, and uh, according to the entry four, uh, we have the uh, most effective approach uh, and uh, an anti-tumeric uh, ratio uh, with these uh, substituents. Um, for another uh, example, but uh, if we uh, use N-butyl, N-butyl in place of uh, R1 uh, in entry 8, uh, our uh, yield is high, but uh, the astromeric ratio uh, is, uh, the astromeric and antimeric ratio uh, is, uh, are low. Uh, by uh, by replacing the other groups uh, such as uh, this G group uh, attached to imine uh, nitrogen, uh, we can uh, we can uh, improve or change the diastereomeric or enantiomeric ratios or yields. For example, changing in the imine uh, activating group uh, this G group to the para methoxybenzyl. Uh, results in a less electro, electrophilic imine, but more Lewis basic uh, nitrogen and resulted in a marked improvement in uh, the astromeric ratio. Uh, according to this uh, structures here in this scheme, uh, we, can, uh, we can change uh, this uh, group attached to the imine um, um, to, to, to affect the diastereomeric or diastereomeric ratio or uh, yield percent. If we put um, phenyl here and, and use different uh, substituents on it, including uh, halogens, uh, uh, halogens uh, which are uh, electron withdrawing or other electron donating groups or naphthyl or um, heteroaryl groups uh, in, uh, attached to this uh, C double bond uh, nitrogen, uh, we can have different yields, uh, more than 55% and uh, high, diastereomeric, uh, high diastereomeric and enantiomeric ratios. Um, so we can so we can result that uh, all of these uh, different kinds of substituents on this uh, phenyl group um, uh, didn't have any uh, didn't have any uh, reducing effect on uh, the astromeric ratio or an antimeric ratio, and all of these cases um, yield percent is at a, a good level. Uh, but uh, about if uh, we use different uh, substituents uh, in position of R1 and R2, in contrast, uh, in contrast, in this uh, case that we had uh, two methyl, uh, in in this uh, in this scheme we have uh, R1 and R2 uh, with. Uh, uh, with different uh, identities. Uh, and according to the uh, results, yields and the astromeric and enantiomeric ratios, we can result that uh, catalytic method is equally effective for reactions of non-symmetric uh, allyl diboron regions with uh, aryl imines. As we can see here, uh, 
uh, putting different uh, substituents on this uh, phenyl on this phenyl group attached to the imine and using different R1 and uh, R2 uh, substituents in allylic position um, exact um, indeed indeed don't have any reducing effect on uh, the astromeric ratio or uh, enantiomeric ratio Uh, Serial catalyzed uh, stereospecific uh, additions um, are uh, additions indeed are the are uh, the methods for uh, efficient transfer of uh, E or Z uh, alkene stereochemistry from the allyl dibron to the product. Uh, here in this scheme, uh, naphthyl imine in reaction with uh, Z allyl dibron in right side and E allyl bone in left side. In uh, both cases, um, results in uh, good yields and uh, high diastereomeric and enantiomeric uh, ratios. And here uh, we see the proposed uh, catalytic cycle and a stereochemical uh, model for reactional uh, reaction between imine and allyl diboron. Um, some uh, strains and uh, interactions between uh, equatorial or axial uh, orientations in this uh, chair-like uh, transition state uh, cause uh, some specific orientations, for example, uh, in this aryl and this uh, parametoxy uh, benzyl, it should be PMB. Uh, actually, it should be PMB uh, position in uh, axial orientation and uh, this boron to minimize uh, one, three uh, diaxial interactions position in equatorial uh, orientation. And uh, in this scheme, we can uh, we can see some uh, applications or uh, reactions in which we can use a secondary amine um, uh, secondary amine uh, prepared through the um, CU catalyzed uh, reaction, which has been mentioned in previous slides. Uh, for example, uh, we can uh, we can uh, used the secondary amine uh, in the reaction of this region in the uh, Suzuki Miura cross coupling uh, uh, to produce this this product uh, with the yield of 66 per percent or we can use the secondary amine uh, region uh, in the uh, homologation and uh, and uh, and how this uh, uh, this product with uh, good yield of 72 percent. Another reaction uh, or um, procedure we can use uh, secondary amines is proto debration uh, or um, alkenyl boronate. This is structure uh, at the presence of AGF and produce this product. Uh, with the yield of 67 percent. And uh, as the last reaction, uh, synthesis of functionalized uh, pyrrolidines, oxidation or uh, oxidation reduction. Uh, in this process, the secondary amines can be transformed into pyrrolidines by a two-step uh, sequence. Uh, at last, uh, as, as the very brief uh, conclusion, uh, it was the first uh, catalytic enantio and diastero uh, selective process for the synthesis of uh, complex uh, homoallylic uh, amines via the reaction of uh, allyl dibronates uh, with uh, aldimines. Uh, quaternary carbons, as I, um, as I read through the articles, uh, how very um, 
important and vast uh, applications in uh, pharmaceutical uh, industries and uh, drug synthesis. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. So, you too. yeah, that's very good. So, what we're going to do is ask, um, open the floor up to questions, and see. Um, uh, that was a good job, Hamid. Uh, thank, thank you. Doctor. That's a lot of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody asked some questions. Jacob, let's ask some questions. You're a synthetic guy, so you need to ask some questions. Yeah. I don't have one for this talk off the top of my head. I did ask a question in the last one. Okay, good. I don't have a question. So, um, you had previously mentioned, like, relatively early on in your presentation, that reactions of high alley metal complexes leads to poor um, diastereoelectricity. Do you know why that is? Uh, please let me see the. the... Uh, can you see my screen now? Yeah. I can see your screen now. Right there, that side. Oh, in this slide. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. As one of the, uh, as, as the disadvantage of configurational instability for metal free catalytic approaches. Indeed, uh, I, um, I can't see the impact of uh, pi allyl metal complexes uh, on, the, uh, on the result of the diastereo selectivity because I think uh, it, is, it is included in the um, sub, uh, supplementary information and uh, I can't, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't study all of that but uh, maybe I can find through that later. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. No more questions? Don't let me call you out. Thomas, let's have a question. I don't know if you hear me. I'm sorry. I do not actually have a question off the top of my head. Okay. So let me, I want you to go to compound 13. 13. So we're looking at 13, the, 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 the stuff with all compound 13 on it. Slide 13? Yeah. No, it wasn't slide 13. There was like a whole bunch of compounds. Oh, compound. Sorry. Compound. Yeah. Starting with 13. Uh, in this slide or? No, in the slides where, yeah, this one. Oh, here. That's 14. This is 13, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued, yeah, because this fluorine compound, 13H, you see that? 13H. Look at the, yeah. the, look at the conversion. Look at the conversion and yield, the 13H. Look at the bottom, 13, yeah, the conversion and the yield and the, 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 the ratio 98 to two. That's pretty powerful compared to say, for example, for, for these benzene ring compared to say, um, if you look at the, the dihalogenated species, for example, like this bromine chlorine is 56%. Then you have this 13F, you have a trifluoromethane. Yeah, and that's not as hot. But this one with the fluorine on it, yeah, right there in that awful position is pretty hot. Do you have an explanation for this? Maybe due to the um, very high electronegativity of fluorine or the position of fluorine in ortho, I'm not sure. Yeah, so what I want to do, hold on a second. Mm. 
what I want to do, I want to go back to your model, the model, now show me those models that you use in the, uh, right close to the end, the models that you use. The models that they use. So go to the end. The end, I mean. Uh, the, the, end. the next slide you need? Close, close. No, where, where you saw the models, those, those, um, those ring systems. Typical models that we use, the taxon models. Uh, a few more slides. Uh, I'm not go sure. Further. Go, go further. Increase the slides. Go, mm -hmm. go further. Further. Yeah, here. This is the last slide. Before. No, no, no. The one before that. This the, one? No, the other one. Before. Okay. No, dude. Where the ring system is. What? Go one more forward. One forward. Yeah, here. Oh, the Stop. transition state. And yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, it's just an it just it more electro make it more electrophilic. It's okay. Yeah, that's all. Uh, but I'm just trying to see that where that flow flowing line. I wonder if there's like a small interaction with the fluorine and the copper. You see what I'm talking about, guys? You see the flow, you know, where the aryl group is, yeah? You see that aryl group, the aryl group in six. I'm looking at six. Yeah, um, V1, yeah. See what that aryl group is? I wonder if, if when the aryl group has a fluorine also, if it's interacting with the, with, the, with the copper, like a mild interaction in that transition state. You see what I mean? But you can see immediately that, yeah, the electrophilicity increases on that imine, yeah, once you have a electron withdrawing group on it, yeah? So that would explain the increase in yield. You see my point? But I think maybe there's some interaction with the copper and the fluorine. Yeah. Oh well. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so yeah, so good job, good job, good job, good job, good job, good job. You can open up your mics, you know, it's not a lot of course. You can open up your mics as long as you keep quiet and nobody's flushing any stuff. You know, I, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's good. All right, so um, me, you know who I'm excited for? Who next? Wei Wei, is that you? You're gonna be the last speaker. If that's you, I'm excited for your work because it's like really, um, I, I think it's really hard. But who's next? I'm the next, can you hear me? Yeah, so give uh, Wei Wei the power, or should I give Wei Wei the power? I don't know. Um, let's see here. I got, let me go here, Wei Wei, and see if I can give you control. Um, I may make sure that way we got control or something or give me back my control, the hosting ability, yeah? And then I can give way with the hosting ability. Come on. I mean, you're moving slow. I don't even see him anymore. Where is he? Oh, I mean, give me back the hosting ability. Uh, how, I can, how, how I can do that? Go to that blue button or something, or go down to the uh, to participants. Or, no, 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 no. Just go up to the blue thing, the blue button, mm -hmm. the, a blue button in the picture, and give and go host. The blue at the corner, the top right hand corner of that person's screen. Because right now all I see is chat. Can you see it? Uh, please let me. Or. On the right corner on, on top of the screen, you mean? Mm hmm. I'm sorry about this, guys. Um, it's not my fault, it's Hamid. Okay? 
Somebody who had it before explain it to him. Who had it before? Um, where is what you may call it? Where is Bano? Uh, Searching, yeah. Oh, so, so let me show you. Please, please let me, please let me enter again because I have uh, some problem in uh, internet connection. I should leave and enter again. Mm. 